Yo, what's up guys, it's Kim, and today we're talking about why the Lumix G7 is a terrible vlogging camera, but pretty much awesome for everything else. For some context, the Lumix G7 was released in 2015, so it's about a two-year-old camera now. In fact, it's already had its successor, the G85. Now, why would you buy the Lumix G7 in 2017? Well, you can probably get this for $500 to $700 depending on where you buy it. However, if you're looking for a vlogging camera, I'd steer you away from the Lumix G7 into something else. And here are the reasons why. Usually there's five things that you want in a vlogging camera. That's portability, a flip screen, good sound, OIS, which is image stabilization, and lastly, and probably most importantly, good video autofocus. Now in terms of portability, the Lumix G7 has probably got to be one of the best cameras out there right now. It's just got the right balance of being small yet having a good grip. It's also really light, so it's not a pain to carry around all day. On top of that, the Micro Four Third lenses are pretty small compared to other mirrorless camera systems or especially against DSLRs. The Lumix G7 also has a flip screen, which is great. It's also got a mic jack, so you can plug in external microphones, which is really helpful for making good vlogs. Now, the fourth thing you'll want is optical image stabilization or OIS for short. This is really critical for vlogs, especially because you're moving around a lot and you'll want that footage as smooth as possible. In fact, one of the easiest ways to tell if a video was done by a professional or not is just to see how smooth the footage is. Now, when it comes to the Lumix G7, you'll only have optical stabilization in the lens. So obviously, if you buy other lenses that don't have it, you're not going to have stabilization at all. Now comparing this with the iPhone, it actually looks like the iPhone's video is smoother than the Lumix G7. Now while my iPhone 6S does not have optical image stabilization, it only has electronic stabilization, it still definitely looks smoother to me, especially when I add stabilization in post. The last thing you want to look for in a vlogging camera, which is probably the most important thing, is good autofocus. Now let's get something clear. Autofocus for stills is different from autofocus from video. Now just to show you, the Lumix G7 is amazing when it comes to autofocus for stills. It just locks on and it gets you shots that you might otherwise not get if you had slower autofocus. However, when it comes to video, the autofocus is kind of abysmal. The focus will take a while to get to the target. Sometimes it'll pass the target and then come back, but that's just how the system works. What annoys me the most is when it's locked focus onto your face, but at random times will second guess itself and then start refocusing and focusing again. Now if I compare this video to my iPhone, you can see that my iPhone actually hunts quicker and less noticeably, and mostly locks focus. So rather than buying the Lumix G7 as a vlogging camera, I'd steer you towards something like the Sony RX100 or maybe the Canon G7X. Those are premium point and shoots and will definitely have good video quality. If you're starting out and you don't have a budget, start with your smartphone. Let's go back to that footage that I had between the Lumix G7 and the iPhone. It's actually pretty hard to tell which one is which. So after taking that massive dump on the Lumix G7, what's the point of owning it? First of all, it's budget friendly and this is a big step up in terms of image quality in both video and stills from something like a smartphone or even a premium point and shoot. It also has features like a microphone jack and a fully articulated screen. Now something that's definitely not talked about on the internet enough is how well cameras handle and how usable they are. The Lumix G7 is an amazing handling camera. Like I said earlier, the grip is amazing. It fits my hand just right and the menus are really usable. Now, if you compare this to something similar like a Sony a6000, Sony a6000 has a smaller grip. I don't find that it's really comfortable at all to hold. And on top of that, the lenses are massive. Another reason is that it's also really feature packed. This thing has 4K photo, which basically allows you to take 30 frames per second and extract a still from that sequence, which means it's a really fast burst mode and the quality is decent. It also has things like time-lapse, which a lot of cameras actually don't have. You're gonna have to either buy a separate patch for that camera or buy yourself an intervalometer. Now this camera also has pro features like Cine Like D, which is a flat picture profile. This will allow you to grade the footage after you've shot it. And also it's got things like focus peaking and zebras, which will help you compose the shots as well. Lastly, this camera is really dependable. Other cameras in this range do have overheating or they don't shoot 4K or they don't shoot it 
as well. So who's this camera for? I really think that there's three types of people. There's the professional that's looking for an affordable B cam. There is the enthusiast that's looking for a big step up from either their smartphone, point and shoot, or their entry level DSLR or mirrorless camera. And really anybody else that just wants a solid camera for both pictures and stills. Like and subscribe and let me know what you guys think about owning or buying the Lumix G7 in 2017. And don't be shy in suggesting future content in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time.